Nomad. Nomad, I think, is good. A lot of people like to say that she's meta. Nomad is more used for runouts than she is for flanks, especially because they're super easy to shoot and just impact grenade on for the flank. So I think she's good. I don't think she's necessarily needed in the meta, like EMP grenades are needed or being a fragger is needed, right? So I don't think she's necessarily meta, but I still think she's a good operator, so I'll put her in good for now. Next is Blitz, and I think Blitz is situational. You can make an argument for okay. I don't think he's bad, but I think he can be abused correctly. I play in Diamond and Champ lobbies and he's still a menace there if you actually know how to play him correctly but even then if you do know how to play him correctly there's really only certain scenarios where he can't work his best map in my opinion is Oregon and a great example of how you can play blitz correctly is the elbow rush you can rush out the smoke that plays an elbow behind the deployable shield with a blitz after you smoke off everything to your right and you're able to safely do so so there are good examples of playing blitz you can roam clear with somebody behind you as a blitz but he shouldn't be played every single round and I don't think he's a really good operator especially when you can bring somebody that just offers more right next is Dokubi and I think Dokubi is meta. She is the third most banned attacker for a reason. She's really, really good. She has EMP grenades, which we already talked about being a meta thing. She has a gone six for bulletproof destructibility. She's also able to roam clear very effectively with her phone calls. And if she successfully does this or her teammate successfully does this, she gets access to every single defender camera in the entirety of the round, which is very, very powerful. She also has a 1.5 time scope on her DMR, which her DMR is actually pretty good. So I think she's definitely meta. And for the same reason that Doka B is meta, I'm also going to put Lion in meta. Lion has always been a meta operator whenever Doka B is a meta operator because they have the same secondary utility. Like I said, EMP grenades, gone six, 1.5 on a pretty good gun. Although Lion's gun is even better. It has a 50 bullets with little to no recoil and pretty okay damage with a very high skill ceiling operator ability so these two operators are both definitely meta uh, and if you disagree then you really should start looking into playing them more often next is monty and monty for the same reason as blitz is situational he's a shield operator he can be used to take control and to provide almost unlimited intel wherever he goes but there are certain maps where you can't really play him so you're better off just picking somebody else uh, in my opinion his best map is actually clubhouse because you can take rafters for completely free and you can also roam clear very effectively with monty but other than that there's there's not many other situations where you can use him. Nook, I think, is definitely meta for me. Not only is the ability to sneak around really powerful because most people are roaming and are off cams, but she also has an easy to control SMG with a 1.5. She also has a deagle, which is 50 cal, meaning it can blow up soft surfaces to an extent. And she also has frag grenades. Frag grenades are very valuable. Anybody that brings them immediately is put up a category on a tier list because there's only four operators right now that have frag grenades. That's Sledge, Yana, Glass, and Nock. That's it. So in terms of actual utility she's not that bad it's really just her primary ability that's not good but even then people are not on cams as much as they used to be and if you ban people like valk you ban people like solus she can actually be pretty viable next is amaru and amaru for me is just bad i used to put her in situational because there's some strats that you can do but this is a solo queue ranked tier list the only strats that you can do with amaru require team coordination and for you to have like kind of a five stack almost so for making a solo queue tier list i definitely don't think she deserves a situational at all next is fuse and and Fuse is okay. He has an AK-12, which is really cool, and he's good for clearing utility, but there are other operators that are even better for clearing utility than Fuse ever could be, and even then, Fuse is extremely easily counterable. The only time that you can really play Fuse is when you're playing above a site, but even then, they can still shoot your Fuse charges, or they can just move out of the way, and Fuse is all for naught, pretty much being pretty useless in most scenarios. Ace is meta, because what you can do is you can play Ace, and you can have EMP grenades. Your teammate EMP grenades both sides of the wall, and you Ace charge both sides of the wall, making it impossible for anybody to bandit trick or cade trick you. This is the only reliable way to get the wall open whenever you have a Thatcher band and people are trying to trick you, which is 90% of games, meaning that he by definition is meta because he fits the meta very well and is the only counter to the defender tricking meta. But now that we've gone over one hard breacher, let's just go over the rest. We have Thermite and Habana both in good. The reason they're not meta is because you can bring an ace every single round, but a Thermite and a Habana you can't. A Thermite is really good because he has a large breach and it's very quick, but it can get bandit tricked very easily by a good bandit trigger player or even a good cade trigger, right? So you can't really bring him all of the rounds. If you have a Thatcher though, I definitely recommend that you bring him over Ace. But even then, like it's still bandit trickable to an extent if they're really, really good. So Ace is just better because of how good bandit tricking is now. But also there are maps like Oregon, whenever you're trying to get the closet wall open, that are just a lot safer to get the wall open with a ranged hard breach like Ace than a melee distance hard breach like Thermite. And then Habana is cool, but she takes way 
way too long to get big breaches open because of how small her breaches are and how little she can put out at a time. She's cool for getting hatches, but not every site requires you to get a bunch of hatches, which is why I don't think she's completely meta, but I still think she's good because she's a hard breacher, right? Brava is situational because the only reason you would bring a Brava is in a situation where they bring a lot of utility that you can't hack. If they don't bring a lot of utility that you can hack, then she's not very good, right? So you might as well go and bring a Flores or a Twitch if there's nothing that you can hack. So only in certain situations where they have hackable utility should you be playing Brava. Blackbeard is bad. I think the only reason that I play him personally is because I like to troll and like upside down repellent windows and stuff and I like having EMP grenades for my teammates um but that's pretty much it his operator ability is pretty bad and his weapons are also pretty bad next is Grim and I think Grim is actually pretty good after all of the buffs that were given to him he's a lot easier to play now the whole thing with Grim and why he was bad last season was because he was really clunky and he was just really slow to play where his ability needed to be fast and easily swung upon to be effective at all now you're able to swing off of your ability a lot easier and seamlessly because of how fast and easy it is to use his gadget and how good it feels. Also, him having the Bailiff to be able to play vertically and use his B vertically is super powerful. So I think Grim just kind of flows. I don't think he's really that good. Um, like, you're not going to bring him all the time as opposed to somebody like a Hard Breach or any of these operators up here, but he's still pretty good to play. So that's just my personal opinion. I think Grim is actually pretty good right now. Flores, I think, is good. I don't think he's meta because we're not in a huge meta where people are bringing a lot of deployable shields due to the fact that two really highly picked operators just lost their deployable shields now a bunch of people did gain some but they were all people that didn't really use them and you probably aren't going to use them anyways like clash or pulse because you're always going to have c4 on pulse so i i think flores is still good but the meta isn't a shit ton of like bulletproof utility like it was when demon veil came out and the zombie was super broken right but he's still amazing you can always bring him every single round and get a lot of value out of him by breaking malusi banshees barbed wire other bulletproof utility even getting soft walls and playing vertically so i think he's still pretty good next is maverick and i think he's situational there's like one in every 20 rounds that you're going to use maverick for a wall most of the time if you're playing maverick it's because you're using his blowtorch to sneak into somewhere that's reinforced to kind of play like knock where you almost go in as a tertiary fragger and you kind of just sneak back sight and do your thing most people don't even play him for that most people just play him for his weapons he doesn't have frag grenades now which is really unfortunate and what made him really really good so for now you're just going to use him in certain situations where you sneak back sight like you would sneak into dirt and clubhouse whenever they're basement ash i'm going to put in meta i don't think ash is by any means like a really good operator it's just unfortunately we're in a very tdm heavy meta where anybody with a good gun a 1.5 time scope and a three speed is really really good and ash fits all of those requirements if i were making like a comp tier list or a tier list on like what i think is like a good operator she'd be in like okay but she does actually fit the meta pretty well because of how fast paced it is so I have to put her in meta, unfortunately. Next is Yana, and Yana is definitely meta. She is the most picked attacker on attack for a reason. She has two frag grenades, two amazing weapons, infinite information, and is overall extremely easy to play, especially for newer players. And she's very seamless with how her abilities flow into each other. I don't really need to say more. She's overall just the best solo queue attacker in the entire game. Next, I'm gonna go over Sledge and Buck, and there's a bit of controversy here, so bear with me. Number one, I'm going to put Sledge in meta. He has frag grenades like we talked about earlier. He has a 1.5 time scope on a very easy to control gun, and his ability is super, super useful for playing vertical or for just getting bulletproof utility in general. I think he's an outstanding operator. Definitely goes in meta. You play it every single round, no one's really gonna complain. Now, if we go over Buck, I think Buck is just good. He can play below more than Sledge can. In terms of versatility, he definitely has an up on Sledge for sure. But Sledge's frag grenades, an easier to use weapon, which is more applicable to more people because the majority of people are silver and gold. Uh, and overall is just a tad bit harder to play than Sledge's, but also he doesn't fit into the meta as much as Sledge because Sledge has those frag grenades. So I mean, like, I, I definitely think Sledge is better. I might honestly just put Sledge in good because there's nothing about Sledge that's super like meta right now. He's just always is like a good operator. So I think I'll just put him in good. Like you're not always going to have a Sledge for the meta like you will a Yana or a Dokabi. Does that make sense? Like it, it's actually pretty rare that you see him nowadays if you're not just bringing him for the frag grenade. So I think I'll just put him in good for now. I think that's fair. Capitao is situational. I mean, you can always bring a Capitao, but people are playing Warden like six out of 10 rounds most of the time. So 
so you actually don't want to bring a Capital. And if you're not bringing him for smokes, then you're bringing him for his fire grenades, and that is only really situational. You're only doing that on like three different bomb sites, and that's pretty much it. You're really only playing Capital if you're executing on a site. So I mean, that's I, literally that's it. He's just situational. Osa I think is good. I would put her in situational, but I feel like there isn't really a bomb site that you can't bring her on. It's essentially just a deployable shield for attack. I think it's pretty good. I think her weapons are pretty good. The fact that she brings EMP grenades as well makes her pretty good. So I'm just going to put her in good. Next is Finca, and I think she's okay. Now, the reason that I'm putting her in okay and Ash in meta is because Ash at least has some sort of way to destroy bulletproof utility, and her guns are way better than Finca's. Finca's guns are just kind of okay. Her ability is just kind of okay. She doesn't have any way of destroying any bulletproof utility at all. So, um, like, Finca is just getting outshined in every single way by Yana and Ash right now. So, I just you know, she's just okay. Glass, I'm gonna put in situational. I put Glass, like, I, I kind of meet right at Glass my last two seasons in their tier list because he has frag grenades and because he's a three speed with a bearing nine, but I don't think that's enough to really make him, like, an every round pick. You can't play Glass every round and him be super effective, especially on close quarters range maps, but there are certain situations where he is really effective. Let's take Coastline, for example. You can play him almost every single site. Border, if you're pushing archives and you want to hold that really long angle. Um, like, th there are certain situations, like I said, where it's pretty good, but most of the time you don't really want to bring him. I think the fact that he has frag grenades is really the only thing that's saving him from going in okay, but for now, he's situational. IQ, same thing, situational. You can't always bring an IQ, but the main reason you're going to bring an IQ is to counter a specific piece of utility that you're able to scout out in the prep phase. Prime example, let's say you see they have an Echo. You're going to bring an IQ. Let's say that you see they have a Solus, or you see that they have a Valkyrie. That's when you would bring an IQ. You always sixth pick an IQ. You never just go into the round picking an IQ, because usually you just pick IQ to counter something and that would make her inherently situational gridlock i think is good like you can make an argument for situational because you can't really get like the bomb down in every single round but mainly you use gridlock to get the bomb down you use her tracks to cover the noise of you getting the bomb down and you use her tracks to lock down the grid of a site so they can't stop you from getting the bomb down so really she's just meant to get the bomb down but other than that if you don't want to get the bomb down she's good for holding flanks better than nomad even because nomads air drives are easily shootable if you're a good player and you know how to get around them gridlock also has emp grenades a super shorty or a gone six or breaching charges or smokes like she's just crazy she has so much utility her guns are also pretty good pretty underrated in my opinion so i think she's overall just a pretty good operator next is jackal and people are really really under appreciating jackal right now most people are putting jackal in like okay or like good i think jackal is more meta now than he ever has been because everyone's roaming everyone's just trying to get kills no one is droning on attack so if you're like that and you don't want to drone you don't want to waste time you can use footprints super super effectively so i i think like jackal in terms of metas is just really good right now he's banned all the time sure but somebody being banned doesn't mean that they're bad if anything he's getting banned a lot because he's good i think he's really meta because everyone and their mother there is roaming right now so i think having jackal is super super good and i never find myself complaining when my teammate runs it or when i run it next is Callie, and i think she is okay um i i'll put her in situational because there are some certain situations where you can use her and she'd be kind of effective Let's take coastline for example for the same reason that glass is good on coastline except cali can take out all four castle barricades or four out of five of the azami barricades or a deployable shield and three azami barricades or a bunch of barbed wire a bulletproof cam you get the idea she has a lot of bulletproof destruction not only that, but from a range, which is super cool, but you're only going to be able to do that and it be effective on certain maps. Plus the fact that her ability destroys your teammate's ability. Let's say you have a thermite on the wall and you throw a Kali to get rid of the cave. The Kali is also going to get rid of your thermite utility, which is something that's super, super not cool about Kali and is what kind of separates her from being good. But also the range on her sniper is not very friendly. So there are certain situations where you can use her, but it's not all the time. Next is Sens, and I think Sens is okay. I don't think situational because like there are certain situations where you can use him but even then in those certain situations you can just use smoke grenades if you want to play him for his cool dmr you can do that with twitch so really there's no reason to play him if you do you'll get some semi-usefulness out of him because he is a three speed with really good guns it has good smokes if you know how to use them but other than that he's not really that good thatcher i think is good he's not really meta i think emp grenades are 
like at a certain point more valuable than Thatcher because you're not spending an entire operator on EMP grenades like you are with Thatcher. You can bring EMP grenades on people and also bring other utilities. So operators with EMP grenades are inherently more valuable than Thatcher is. And if you know how to use EMP grenades effectively, you don't need a Thatcher, right? So it almost makes sense not to bring him. And, and like also people are so good at EMP grenade acing walls now that it's just he's not needed. So like by definition, he's not meta because he's not needed in the current meta. But is he still a good operator? Sure. That's why I'm putting him in good. Zero, I think is good. He's good for watching flanks and he's good for hiding cameras that you can use to scout out the enemies. Not really much I can say. Uh, overall, he's just a good solo queue operator. Ying, I've been saying this for the longest. Ying is by far, in my opinion, the most underrated attacker in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Like, ridiculous. Ying has always been powerful. They've done nothing but buff her. I mean, they gave her a fourth Candela a few seasons ago when no one seemed to notice. You can also Candela through surfaces if you want to play vertically. She has an LMG with a bunch of scopes on her gun that is easy to control with a 50 round drum mag. She has smokes for a plant. And the best thing is she doesn't blind herself with a utility. So she's super good for solo queue. This is I'm, this is the solo queue tier list. And the meta is everybody just run in and shoot each other. With Ying, it makes it a lot easier to do that. And you can play her soloistically. So I think she's super meta. I said this last season. I said this the season before. I play Ying all the time. I'm actually like somewhat of a Ying main because of how good she is. She's like such a sleeper pick. Now, yes, everyone is playing Warden. That is one thing that you do have on me as a Ying meat rider. But that's why you scout out in the prep phase if they have a Warden or not. And if they don't, then when you're yinging in, check if it's a Warden. And if you hear the glasses when you're yinging, then you know don't swing. And if you quick peek and the person you just quick peeked isn't the Warden, then just flash in because it's a one out of five chance that the person you're flashing is the Warden, right? So, I mean, even if there is a Warden, I kind of still run ying anyways. And then our final two operators, we have Twitch and Zofia. I think they're both good. They both have good utility. They both have good scopes. They both have good guns. And it's pretty much all I can really say. They're not really meta in their own way, but they're still pretty good operators. But that is it for the attacker tier list for year eight season two Dread Factor. If you like the video, like it down below. I also just got sponsored. So if you want to support me in the channel, click the link at the end of this video or in the description. Sub to the channel down below if you want to see more videos. My name is Alka and I will see you on the next video. Later.